Um, so yes, my name is Alon. Uh, I work for a company called BMC. Anyone heard about BMC before? Quite a big company uh, doing enterprise management solutions. Um, solutions like service management, remedy, if someone is familiar, uh, cloud management, cloud cost control, cloud security. And my area of expertise is what we call today workflow orchestration, known also as workload automation. Um, and I know when we say workflow orchestration, many things come, come to mind about what exactly workflow orchestration is. And some people think about Jenkins, some people think about Kubernetes. But I will be talking about a different type of workflow orchestration, and I will get into it later in the presentation. So hopefully, uh, everything will be clear. Um, if you wonder about my accent, you just saw the video. Uh, usually, people guess that I'm French. I'm not. I'm everything but French. Any French in the audience? OK, so I'm Israeli, half Brazilian, uh, living for many years now in London. Unfortunately, my accent is still not British, but it is what it is. French. Um, I've been in BMC for 20 years. Uh, I started when I was very young, 12. I'm kidding. Um, but all those years working around this area of workload automation, uh, doing various roles around development, uh, product management, uh, channels, and so on. And my current focus is uh, workload automation in the areas of DevOps, cloud, and big data. Anyway, the one topic I will not be talking about today is basketball. I know that uh, uh, here in Lithuania, I heard that uh, basketball is very popular. Someone told me a few days ago it's like a religion. So my basketball team is Maccabi Tel Aviv. This is where I grew up, in Tel Aviv. Um, they, are, they are not doing really well. That's a picture I took last week. I happened to be in the game when they lost against Anadolu. And yesterday they lost here in Lit sorry, they lost in Tel Aviv, but to a team from Lithuania, to uh, Kaunas, Jalgiris Kaunas. Everyone, anyone from Kaunas here? Okay, so you're probably happier than I am. Anyway, it's probably the end of the season for my team. But we will not be talking about basketball. We'll talk about application and we'll talk about workflow orchestration. And let's start by having a look at some numbers that were presented by Gartner around application development. And basically, uh, very interesting, Gartner is saying that this year, the expectation is that organizations will spend around $200 billion on developing new applications. It's definitely a big number. What is more interesting than that is what you can see on your uh, right uh, uh, side of the slide is the fact that Gartner predicts that 75% of the applications used by organizations these days will be built in-house. The rest, 25%, will be bought. And when we think about it, yes, organizations are still buying applications, system of records, ERPs, CRMs, uh, mostly to provide the kind of the backbone, uh, the capabilities, the scalability and capabilities to run uh, the operations successfully. But at the same time, organizations are investing a lot, 75% in developing new applications, more customer facing, more innovative, more digital um, applications. So this combination of some of the applications being bought and some of the applications being built in-house is very common. But again, the numbers are growing to 75% of the applications being built in-house, as probably all of you are familiar with. Another interesting number uh, coming from Red Hat is the fact that uh, if you compare 2016 to 2013, um, by then, 7.4 more applications were built on a strategy of mobile. And this is definitely a shift that is happening in the market. Those numbers are growing, and we can see it affect the way that new applications are being built. All right, I pressed the wrong button. 
So now let's talk about automation. And when we talk about digital transformation, there are a few levels or a few kinds of uh, automation um, that come to mind. The first one, the one you can see at the bottom, the, the blue layer, it's the infrastructure optimization. Infrastructure optimization, here it's all about automating the infrastructure, automating the resources in terms of access, security, operation, and so on. So that's the operational uh, layer of infrastructure automation. Then in the middle, it's all about agility, right? This is where it's all about automation of development processes, solutions such as Jenkins. It's about application, build, and release. That's the automation level in the middle. And then we look at the top, and the top is what we call today uh, application workflow orchestration, and this is where we focus, this is where we live, this is what we do, this is what we have been doing for many years, and this is where we are evolving and my presentation will focus on. Here we talk about digital business applications, right? So it's about automation and orchestration, not of the development process, but of the application itself. Once you move to production, once you need to have a certain sequence, for example, a process will follow two different processes and will run only if those two different processes will finish uh, successfully. A process needs to start running at 10 o'clock at night or when there is an event triggering the process. It's all about orchestration of the application workflow. This is what we do. This is what I will be presenting. Um, our solution is called Control-M. I'm guessing that some of you came across it before. Um, it's actually the leading solution in this area of business application uh, workflow. Um, and in the next, le ne next few slides, I will explain exactly how it looks like. So, um, why is workflow orchestration so challenging and why do we need a solution for workflow orchestration? Let's start by having a look at the right side. At the right side, you see typical applications that customers, organizations may be running. So it can be an ATM transaction, HR applications, billing, lots of common applications that are a bit more traditional. But then we have also uh, new innovative applications, for example, uh, a fraud detection application that will be based on a big data system that is collecting data uh, from multiple sources. Anyway, many types of applications on the right side, uh, and this is what the customers are doing. On the left side, you see the people, the personas that are involved in this process of running those applications. And many types of personas, many types of people. We have developers, we have uh, schedulers, operations, business users, architects. Everyone has some kind of a role in order to assure that the applications that you see on the right side are running successfully. Different roles, different needs, different skills, at the end of the day, different people, but all of them need to somehow interact in order to assure that the applications are running successfully. Right, and then of course, in the middle. In the middle, you see all the complex technologies. So when you run an application, it can be a combination of AWS services, and Docker, and maybe still running some stuff on SAP, which is still very popular, Tableau, um, file transfers, all the huge amount of technologies around big data these days, Hadoop and the rest, Spark. So a mix of technologies that can be used in order to achieve the, uh, the outcome that the application wants to deliver. It's quite complex and what happens is that many times some of those technologies will have some kind of a automation capability, scheduling capabilities. For example, uh, AWS. AWS has components, services, such as AWS Batch and AWS Step Functions. Azure, Logic Apps, and more. Um, SAP, they have more than one scheduler. Uh, so each and every component in this 
what we call the spaghetti ball of technologies, will have different scheduling capabilities. And one of the bigger challenges is that those technologies and those specific automation capabilities, automation tools, don't really interact. Which means that if I'm a customer, I'm currently developing a new application, and I'm taking advantage of many applications, sorry, many technologies out there, then it's quite difficult because I need to take care of the integration of different pieces that don't really fit together. And the result is what you see here. It's a spaghetti ball of technologies, different people using different technologies to deliver the applications. So what we have been doing, uh, as I mentioned before, with our solution called Control M, and we've been in the market for over 30 years now, so uh, I know it's a long time. Uh, what we have been doing, it's really about abstracting the complexity of this ball of technologies. We are providing the end-to-end -end orchestration, the capability to manage workflows that span across everything that an organization may be, may be doing when uh, developing a new application. So it doesn't matter which application you're using, it doesn't matter which technologies are used in the way in order to achieve the outcome you want. It doesn't matter who is the person involved. We are providing the right tools so everyone can interact, everyone can use one um, single tool to manage the entire workflow. The advantages are big, and I will be talking about it in the next few slides, uh, but clearly it's about end-to-end -end orchestration of uh, application workflows across data, infrastructure, and applications. Some of the capabilities that are very important when you want to run a uh, workflow orchestration, first, SLA management. You want to assure that uh, your SLAs are met, and what we are providing is really the capability to manage everything and assure that if something is wrong, if a process is late, it can be late to start or la late to finish, or if there is any kind of a delay in the process or if something goes wrong, uh, we can identify it and assure that your SLAs are met, and if there is a challenge, if there is a chance that your SLA will be missed, we can notify you in advance. We talked about the end-to-end -end connectivity. It's really about managing everything you have. Um, I have a customer uh, in the US. Um, I can mention the name, Malwarebytes. Um, they are in the business of detecting malware. Uh, I believe many of you know them. And I like how they talk about it. They talk about this workflow orchestration platform, Control M, being the backbone. It doesn't matter which technologies we use today or use or will use in the future, we know that it can orchestrate it all end to end. Auditing is very important. Obviously, you want to assure that everything that is happening, starting a process, stopping a process, changing something in the configuration of the process can be uh, tracked and then you can identify who is doing what and when, and of course, security is incorporated, so uh, everyone uh, can handle those processes only based on predefined authorizations. Logs and outputs, so we keep information about everything that is happening within the process, within the job. And finally, of course, scalability and stability. Um, this is the core of the environment. So if a customer is using our solution to run their business, it must run 24-7, it must um, be reliable, because if it fails, the whole business is at risk. All right, so I talked quite a lot about uh, workflow orchestration and about Control M and all those capabilities, but how exactly does it relate to DevOps? So let's start by having a look at some numbers that were published by uh, the Puppet uh, State of DevOps report. And clearly, organizations that are implementing DevOps today can see lots of advantages in this process of, of uh, adopting and um, taking advantage of DevOps methodologies. They can uh, deploy much faster, they can deploy many more applications, the recovery from failures is definitely higher, um, change failure rate uh, is lower, 
And finally, they need to spend less time on unplanned rework because, of course, as hopefully and probably all of you are DevOps experts here, because as you know, you take the right measures, the right steps to assure that uh, uh, there is a, a good interaction and a good uh, standards being implemented when uh, moving from dev to production. Now, if we look at the traditional SDLC, as you can see at the top of the slide, uh, obviously there are multiple steps, right? And you are familiar with it. You code, you debug, you test, uh, you need to do some integration, and finally you need to move to production. Speaking to customers, what we realize is that many times something is missing here. So organizations spend a lot of time in developing a new application. And then when they are ready to move this application to production, then they realize that, oh, we need to take care of the automation, of the orchestration, of the scheduling, creating all the logic between the jobs that are supposed to run within the application. Um, so many times, as we hear from customers, only when they move to production, this is when they start uh, working on how exactly is it going to work in production, how exactly is it going to be orchestrated and automated. What we are doing and what many of our customers are already doing is really a shift left of the workflow orchestration, a shift left of job scheduling. And the concept is very simple. Start from day one. Once you start developing a new application, start incorporating into it the logic of how exactly the application is going to work, how exactly the application is going to run in production. So if you want workflow orchestration shift left, what we call jobs as code, which is really within the code calling all the actions so the workflows will be orchestrated doing it early in the development lifecycle. And I will talk about it in the next few slides. So let's have a different look here and see what exactly do we mean shift left of workflow orchestration. Speaking to customers, we heard that many times when applications are being built, very early in the development uh, process, developers spend lots of time scripting, right? I'm sure that you are familiar with it. You need to create certain scripts to assure that your processes are running and tested successfully. For example, you have a, pre uh, a job that depends on a predecessor job, or you want to do some kind of event triggering, or you want to do some kind of um, recovery. So all those actions, all those let's use very simple words, scheduling actions need to be scripted because that's usually what, uh, how organizations work. So lots of time is being spent on scripting, which is obviously a poor usage of the developer's time. Developers are very expensive, I'm sure you know it. Um, they should be focusing on creating value to the business. You should be focusing on uh, developing the application itself rather than spending lots of time on operational plumbing. And this is the reality. The reality is that many times, lots of time will be spent on those scripting, which is obviously a waste of your time, a waste of money for the organizations. But more than that, it means that if you are using basic tools let's say Cron or Jenkins during the development process, those solutions are not meant to deal with workflow orchestration in production, and they don't. It means that when you move your application through the CI-CD pipeline and you reach to production, the tools that you use for orchestration in the development phase are not the same tool that will actually run the application in production, which means that you need to spend more time on repackaging the application, including the workflow uh, orchestration capabilities. And as we know, it means that you are not really truthful to the DevOps uh, concept and uh, to automatic testing of what will be running on production. And the result is clear. Delays, errors, 
stuff that was tested in early stages is not exactly what is going to run in production, which means that in production, more likely that you will be surprised. You need to fix stuff before it's too late, and many times it is late. So what we are suggesting with the shift left of, um, of the workflow orchestration, or what we call today jobs as code, is really from day one, start spending time on thinking of how the application is going to be orchestrated in production. How do you do it? So we provide an API, what we call Control M Automation API, an API which can be embedded in your JSON code. So very early in the development lifecycle, you can start building and including the application workflow orchestration logic in the code. And then it means that once you move your application through all the various steps, stages into production, there will be no surprises. It will be well-defined, it will be well-tested, and what is going to run in production, it's exactly what was tested in the early stages. If we look at uh, the SDLC and the various steps, it's not just about defining the jobs, obviously. You want to assure that those jobs, those processes, those workflows are running successfully. So uh, at the different steps, this is where we fit. Uh, you can include the workflow orchestration capabilities, the logic. For example, run uh, a job at a certain time or based on an event, arrival of a file, or so on, and then trigger a, a different set of jobs. All of this logic can be now coded within the code using uh, Automation API as a part of your JSON code. Then there is the step of committing. In this case, in this example, the usage is Git. Um, build done in Jenkins and usage of Control M to assure that everything is uh, orchestrated successfully. Control M can also provision the resources that you need in order to run the application. And finally, testing and moving the application to production. The concept is clear using the same solution, the same strong workflow orchestration solution from the beginning of the process of development to assure that your applications will be, de will be uh, delivered faster and safer. Um, so how, does, how do we do it? How, do we, uh, how does Control M Automation API works? So first, as I've just mentioned, within your JSON code, you can include uh, the scheduling, uh, I want to use very simple words, so I'm using scheduling. Nowadays we use workflow orchestration, but you can use, you can include all your scheduling needs, all the logic in your code, in your JSON code. The next step will be to commit those changes to Git. And finally, uh, the application build, which in this example, for example, it's done by Jenkins. And that's it. So defining your, or developing your application with your scheduling workflow orchestration capabilities and having this jobs as code concept. Lots of advantages, obviously. Scalability. It's easy to scale when you are doing things right, when you don't need to spend precious time on plumbing. Enable innovation. So as I just mentioned, Developers are expensive, so instead of spending time on writing scripts and going back and forth because of failures, uh, taking advantage of a tool that provides all those advanced automation scheduling capabilities and f give time back to developers to focus on innovation. DevTools harmony, having Dev and Ops using the same tool in order to achieve the, the target, which is delivery of the application fast and safe. And future-proofed, uh, and that's what I said earlier when it comes to uh, the solution being a kind of a backbone. It doesn't matter which technology you are using today or are planning to use in the future, everything can be orchestrated um, using the same solution. I want to say a few words about one of our customers, Amadeus. Anyone from Amadeus in the audience? I cannot see. 
All right, so I'm not sure if you are familiar with Amadeus. Uh, they are huge. So they are in the business of travel services. Okay? Um, they are usually at the back, so you don't really see them, but many times when you book a flight, hotels, cars, everything related to travel, at the back, there will be a process running by Amadeus to manage those transactions, and they run millions of transactions per day. Actually, 90% of the travel bookings in the world are managed by Amadeus. So the numbers are huge. And they, let me give you another example. Um, well, I'll get to it later. Uh, so they've been using our product for many years and they're running uh, hundreds of thousands of jobs per day, automating it and orchestrating it um, using our solution. But what they realized recently is that um, uh, obviously something is changing in the travel industry. It's changing not only in the travel industry, but it's really about um, online transactions. The number of transactions is growing very fast due to online transactions, due, due to the usage of mobile. I mean, very few people go these days to a travel agency. We do it online. We, I use the phone to book my flights, book hotels, check in and so on. But more than that, um, many times I don't really book a flight. I only check for availability and check for prices. And nowadays it's very easy because I can do it using my phone, right? I can use my phone to do all of those transactions. So the number of the transactions that Amadeus need to run and manage is growing really fast. Amadeus realized that in order to support this growth, they need to change the way, the way they work, they need to change the way they are structured. So they are uh, rearranging their 5,000 developers into DevOps teams taking advantage of DevOps uh, methodologies and moving everything to the cloud so all the new applications are being built in the cloud. In this process, they are using our solution, so they are giving developers, 5,000 developers, the capabilities to schedule and define the scheduling logic of the applications in the code, which means, as you can see from the numbers here, that they can move applications much faster to production. It's much easier to put changes into existing application. You can see over 5,000 changes done a month, and for them it's critical. It's a critical... Um, uh, uh, processes that Amadeus run. I can give you just one example. Um, every time a flight takes off from Europe to the US, there is a process that they need to follow. So before they leave, they need to send to the US, to the de uh, Department of Homeland Security in the US, they need to send the passenger manifest, right? the list of all the passengers within the flight, so the U.S. Uh, Department of Homeland Security can clear it and, and, and confirm, yes, all fine, uh, no suspects on this flight, flight can take off. It happens for each and every flight out of Europe. This process is orchestrated and automated using our solution, and what... Uh, we heard from Amadeus is that if something goes wrong, if for some reason this system that we are using for orchestration will fail for an hour or two, 90% of the flights across the world will not be able to take off. So obviously this is mission critical to them and it's being automated uh, using the uh, orchestration capabilities I've just mentioned and now giving the developers the access to do it themselves as a part of their code. So, why doing it? Why um, using uh, jobs as code? Well, I just added this slide a few minutes ago, actually, because it's cool. Uh, I heard it from a customer saying, yes, it's cool, that's why we're doing it, but obviously that's not the reason. There are very strong reasons for doing jobs as code. Yes, it may be cool, but beyond that, it provides a lot of benefits to organizations. Uh, easily consumed by everyone, all the different personas within the organization, dev and ops and line of business people. It saves time, which means that applications can be delivered faster. Nowadays, it's a must. 
because many times if you are too late in deliver your application there is a good chance that your application will not be relevant anymore because your competition did it already ahead of you conserve resources we talked about it you are expensive resources you want to spend your time on what brings value to the business you don't want to spend time on creating scripts to operate and orchestrate the jobs reduce errors the more you start early in the process of the development to include the scheduling the workflow orchestration the jobs as code the, the better chances you have to move into production with a minimum number of errors consistency is also very important because as we know many times we may, maybe not me because I'm working for the same company for 20 years but people do move organizations right so I'm sure that all of you work for different companies and what happens when you leave when you work on developing an application and you leave and in this process or bef during the process of development you started creating scripts and now someone else needs to take over and manage and continue the work and obviously uh, a big challenge is how to manage and get familiar with all the scripting that was done to do the operational plumbing well you don't need to do that with our solution uh, from day one it's within the code the scheduling the orchestration capabilities and as I've just mentioned uh, scalability and stability this is really important uh, those applications that you are developing in many cases are mission critical if they fail the entire business will be in danger uh, organizations will lose money you need to be able to scale and you, you need to be able to have st uh, stability across your applications Another slide I added earlier this morning, anyone here was yesterday at Matthew Simon's keynote presentation at the end of the day? I really liked it, it was very interesting and he was talking about hammers, I'm not going to talk about hammers, but he talked about the fact that uh, uh, everything can be used as a hammer, but at the end of the day, every tool has its own. By the way, is Matthew in the audience? I didn't see him. No. So every tool can be used as a hammer, but every tool at the end of the day has a specific role and task and using the right tool is important. I think this is also relevant um, to what I just presented here to workflow orchestration. Use the right tool for wor workflow orchestration. You have great tools for uh, release management. You have great tools to manage the development process and moving your application through your CI CD uh, pipeline. But then when it comes to workflow orchestration, this is where it becomes a bit tricky. And the fact that in many of the situations today, in production, a workflow orchestration tool will be used, but s earlier in the process, organizations tend to use open source scripting and a combination of all of those obviously creates a problem. If you want to read more uh, about it, please go to this website, jobsascode.io. Uh, you will find a lot of information. You will find a demo. You will find uh, uh, videos, uh, customer te testimonials. Um, I'm sure as you are developers, this is a website for developers. I'm sure that you will find it interesting um, and learn more about what I've just presented. And I think with that, I'm open to questions. Thank you, Alan.